The Motorola Moto G Play is a low-cost smartphone that competes in the entry-level segment with the recently announced Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. The main distinction between the two is that the Galaxy A14 includes 5G while the Moto G Play does not. There's definitely a market for a non-5G device like the Moto G Play, especially if you live in an area where 5G isn't yet prevalent. Furthermore, the lack of full-featured smartphones under $200 makes the Moto G Play a viable option for anyone on a tight budget. However, our current top pick in this price range is the year-old Moto G Power, which has similar specs to the Moto G Play but outperforms it in terms of battery life and has a better 50-megapixel camera. The design of the Moto G Play is our favorite feature, nothing about it looks or feels cheap. If you put it next to a mid-range smartphone, you wouldn't be able to tell which one is a few hundred dollars cheaper. The plastic feels sturdy and does not appear to attract fingerprints or scratches. It is only available in deep indigo, a lovely dark blue color. The 2023 Moto G Play is a relatively large phone, measuring 167 by 76 by 0.9 centimeters and weighing 202 grams, but this is consistent with previous generations. It has an 86.45% screen-to-body ratio. There are some noticeable bezels around the screen's edges, which house the selfie camera notch above the display, but they aren't too noticeable. At 6.5 inches, the screen is a good size. At 1600 by 720 pixels, the resolution is rather low, but that is to be expected at this price. The 90Hz refresh rate is surprising. Sub $200 phones are frequently limited to 60Hz, so the extra speed here is a welcome change. Three vertically aligned cameras are located on the phone's back. The upper half of the rear panel houses a fingerprint reader for unlocking the phone. We rigorously tested the scanner and discovered it to be accurate and fast. When you look around the rest of the phone, you'll notice a 3.5mm jack on top. Headphone jacks are becoming increasingly scarce, so wired headphone users should be pleased. The power button and volume rocker are on the right edge, and the bottom edge houses a single speaker and USB-C port. Finally, on the left edge is a SIM microSD card slot. The phone has an IP52 rating for dust resistance and light water splash resistance. We don't expect a device at this price to be completely waterproof. In phones under $200, 5G support is hit or miss. The Moto G Play lacks 5G, but it performed admirably in our LTE speed and reliability tests. Perhaps the most significant issue with the phone is that 5G support is frequently only marginally more expensive. The aforementioned Samsung Galaxy A14, for example, costs only $30 more. Everyone's budget is different, but if you have the extra cash and live in an area with 5G coverage, it's worthwhile to upgrade to a more future-proof handset. We compared LTE performance to the TCL 30XE 5G with the 5G radio turned off by driving out to an area with poor T-Mobile service, running speed tests, and comparing the results. The Moto G Play delivered 2 megabits per second download speeds, while the TCL 30XE delivered 1.5 megabits per second. It's a minor difference, but it demonstrates that you'll be able to use the phone even if coverage is spotty. When we traveled to an area with strong T-Mobile coverage, the Moto averaged 48 megabits per second, compared to the TCL 30XE 68 megabits per second. The Moto G Play only supports Wi-Fi 5, not Wi-Fi 6 or 6E, so speeds will be adequate but not spectacular. The phone performed similarly to the TCL 30XE 5G which is also limited to Wi-Fi 5. The Moto averaged 201 megabits per second down in the same room as the router, while the TCL averaged 203 megabits per second. We also tested the phones near the router's edge and found nearly identical results, with the Moto G Play getting 4.0 megabits per second down and the TCL getting 4.2 megabits per second down. The call quality is outstanding. Everyone we spoke with could hear us clearly in varying conditions, and we could hear them as well. The speakers on the phone are quite loud. The earpiece has a volume peak of 85 decibel and the speakerphone has a volume peak of 92 decibel. Both are perfectly audible in most situations. The phone supports Bluetooth 5.0 for connecting to accessories rather than Bluetooth 5.3, which is the most recent standard. The performance isn't spectacular, but that's to be expected from a phone at this price. 
The Moto G Play is a low-cost phone, and its speed and performance are about what we'd expect for the price. Starting with the PC Mark Work Benchmark, which is designed to show how the phone handles real-world tasks like spreadsheet manipulation, text writing, and image editing, the Moto G Play scored 5,243. That's one of the lowest ratings we've seen. In comparison, the $228 OnePlus Nord N300 scored an acceptable 8,159. The Moto G Play scored 161 on the single-core test and 581 on the multi-core test in the Geekbench 5 test, which measures raw computing power. Surprisingly, the Moto G Play 2021 received scores of 255 and 1,269 on the same tests. This is because the Qualcomm Snapdragon 460 processor is used in the 2021 model, while the MediaTek Helio G37 is used in the 2023 model. Gaming performance is, unsurprisingly, limited. The phone averaged 5.1 and 1.5 frames per second in the GFX Bench Aztec on-screen and off-screen 1440p tests. If you want to play graphically advanced games like Genshin Impact, you'll need to spend a little more money on a mid-range phone. Aside from the numbers, you can feel the phone's slowness when launching apps and using it throughout the day. On the plus side, the 5000 mAh cell provides adequate battery life. In our battery drain test, we ran a YouTube video continuously while connected to Wi-Fi and with the screen brightness set to maximum for 11 hours and 15 minutes. This is a significant decrease from the Moto G Play 2021 model, which lasted 18 hours and 42 minutes. The 2023 model, on the other hand, performs above average, for example, the TCL 30XE 5G lasted only 6 hours and 15 minutes on the same test. You get 10 watt wired charging support for recharging the phone, which isn't the fastest but is adequate for the price. The 10 watt charger is included in the box. It's not surprising that there's no wireless charging. The audio performance from the single speaker is subpar. Unfortunately, there is no NFC, so if you want mobile payment support, you'll have to spend more money on a more expensive phone. The Moto G Play's camera system is nothing to write home about, but it's adequate for a $170 phone. It has a 16-megapixel main camera, a 2-megapixel macro camera, and a 2-megapixel depth sensor. A basic 5-megapixel selfie camera is located on the front of the device. We tested the rear cameras in various lighting conditions and discovered that pictures look great in daylight but fall short in low light. There is a portrait mode that adds a bokeh effect to photos, but the background blur isn't as clean as we'd like. The macro lens captures detail well when close to subjects, though the resulting images are noticeably low resolution at 2 megapixel. The Moto G captures 1080p video at 30 frames per second, which is adequate even if it is not the highest resolution and frame rate available. The selfie camera isn't very good. Even in bright sunlight, the resulting images appear washed out. It'll suffice for showing off an outfit or something simple, but if you want to create social media content that looks good, you'll need to upgrade to a more expensive device. Overall, the cameras are in line with what we'd expect from a phone at this price. They won't blow you away, but in good lighting, they'll take passable photos. If you value camera capabilities, consider upgrading to a mid-range device. Despite the fact that Android 13 has been available since August, Motorola is still shipping the Moto G Play with Android 12. The company promises three years of bi-monthly security updates, which is commendable, but only one OS upgrade to Android 13. The majority of Samsung and Google's devices have better upgrade promises, but for a $170 phone, this is a perfectly acceptable update policy, some companies don't even guarantee a single Android version upgrade on their entry-level phones. The Android skin has a stock-like feel to it, which we like. Motorola also doesn't include too many extra apps, which is a plus. There's the Moto app, which adds a lot of extra functionality, and a few other lightweight apps, but nothing significantly slows down the Android 12 experience. If there's one thing we can say about the Motorola Moto G Play, it's that it's ridiculously cheap. It's not a fast or high-performance phone, but given its low price, it's easy to overlook some of its flaws. The main issue is that a 5G phone can be had for as little as $30 more. If you don't need 5G, the Moto G Power has a better camera and a longer battery life for the same price, 
or the $228 OnePlus Nord N300 has better overall performance and 5G.